convincing winners in the last three games and played really well. Um, and he's probably got a few players back from injury. He's probably got a, a stronger squad to select from in relation to, to what they've got and, and they've produced the results off the back of it. Obviously, they were in a, a difficult situ situation previous to those three wins, but you, you've seen how three wins and nine points shoots you up the table and now they're in a pretty solid position. So he'll be really pleased with their, where they're at and they'll be full of confidence going into Friday's fixture. Um, but we're not in a bad place ourselves. Um, performances haven't been too bad and obviously the points we picked up against Salford put us in a good position. Um, the ones which needed looking after at the start of this week got a little bit of rest and recovery and the ones who needed the work got, got the work. So we prepared well this week. I'm pretty pleased with where the squad's at going into this weekend. We saw obviously early in the season that Port Vale beat us at the park. And I think a few of us expected them to be there or thereabouts at the top this season. The last few results, is that more of what you expected from Port Vale rather than the poor results they have been having? Yeah, look, I, I've just touched on it there. I don't think that, that group of players who played in that game, second game into this season, have been available often enough for whatever manager's been in charge um, through fitness, through form, through suspension, through whatever means. They've, they've struggled with consistency in terms of team selection, um, but they've certainly had that in the last few games, hence why the results have improved. But you also you see the the players on the pitch for them recently and they're good players certainly at this level got a host of experience a lot of physicality and some really good players at the top end of the pitch and as much as he'll have a hard working team he'll have also added quality recently hence, hence the results so um, it, ends, it always feels like we, we speak too much about the opposition in relation to what to expect, expect because in terms of this season it's always so difficult to prepare there's so little time to do so anyway um, and you're always trying to pick up certain trends and patterns but in terms of the information we give to our players they have to concentrate on, on themselves you said it yourself earlier that every time someone mentions Vale Park, they mention the pitch. Do you think a large pitch like Vale Park will suit us? Hopefully. Time will tell. We'll know, at, you know, come five o'clock on, on Friday. Um, traditionally, we've played well on bigger pitches, um, but hopefully it's a, a decent surface. Obviously, they've not played since Newport over two weeks ago in terms of a home game. Um, hopefully, it'll be a good enough service to, to move the ball on. But you've got to be in the game. You've got to get to the ball. You've got to get control of the ball first and foremost. And we won't be starting the, the game with that mindset. We'll be starting the game with the right mindset in terms of competing against a, a physical, strong, dynamic team and earning the right to then do what you're speaking about in terms of using the ball. And when we do use the ball, we want it to be in the right areas of the pitch, which is close to the opposition goal. So, like I say, you've always got to start the game with the same mindset. And we've got good footballers at this football club, but, but so Port Vale. So they'll be looking to use that space as well. Last week's win against Salford was a great response to the, the previous three results. Do you think this Easter period, it's a great opportunity to go on, get back on a good run now, isn't it? It's another opportunity. Friday's another opportunity, obviously, Monday off the back of that, two games in quick succession. But that's generally been the season anyway. So in terms of what's ahead of us, um, at the end of, of Monday, we'll know we've got eight games left. We'll know where we are in the league table. Um, once it starts getting into those single figures, then you do naturally start looking at other results elsewhere, other fixtures as well. But we're, we're fully concentrated on ourselves for Friday, Monday. Um, in terms of what's happened in the last few weeks at the club we were so close to picking up more points and we might play really well this weekend into the two games and not pick up any points so it's all about the production line at the moment and the execution and the outcome and the outcome hopefully is picking up some valuable points this weekend and um, but that will start with a full-blooded performance uh, and come three o'clock on Friday. Jake Taylor came off at half time last weekend what's the update on him? Well, Jake had a, a tight quad um, we hope it's not a we, we expect it not to be a significant thigh strain. Um, he's been outside with a physio today doing a little bit of work, so he's not been with the group this week. We'll assess him tomorrow. Uh, we hope he makes the journey. Um, realistically, we won't have had enough training time this week to, to start the game, especially. Um, so we've got to assess whether or not we risk him in relation to the bench. If not, then he'll get a couple more days rest and recovery and, and preparation for Monday. Um, but I certainly don't want to put him at risk when there's still a, a lot of football left to be played this season. Um, but that was a, a result of the effort he put in in, in the game at Oldham, anyone who's there was, was must have seen the effort he put in, in in that second half, especially driving the team forward constantly and, and putting his body on the line. And unfortunately, he pushed his body to the absolute limits, uh, which is what you want from your captain. But you could just see he was a little bit, he was struggling a little bit in the game against Salford. And, and physically, it does take its toll. Uh, we hope it's not a significant injury for Jake because he's so, so important for us. Um, and it'd be great if we have him available over the Easter weekend. And of course, Joel Randall's had his scan results back. Can you just tell us what they revealed? Yeah, look, it's a tear. It's a significant tear, um, but there's no rupture. There's no damage to the tendon. It's a, a mid-belly tear, mid-body tear in terms of the middle of the, the hamstring muscle. Um, and it could have been a lot worse. 
so it's not a, a total tear in terms of a grade three and a serious grade three, but it's, it's significant enough to rule him out for, uh, unfortunately, a long period of time. So um, in terms of Jola and his future, in terms of his career, it's important that this, this tear didn't set him back a long period of time or worst case scenario if he needed surgery, um, but that's certainly not the case. So we're really pleased in terms of those results. Um, unfortunately, Alex Fisher picked up a calf, muscle injury uh, last week, hence why he wasn't available against Solfi. He won't be available this weekend. Johnny Maxted saw the specialist on Monday and he's still out for a further two weeks whilst at the end of his little finger heals. Um, and obviously, Randall Williams got some game time um, on Saturday, which was all it was great to see for, for everyone involved. Um, still a little bit raw and a little bit rusty, um, but he's had another couple of days training. And if he comes through tomorrow, then hopefully he'll be available for the bench on, on Friday. Finally, then, it's a milestone for you on Friday as well. 150th Exeter City match as manager. Is yeah. it? Um, in in all, all competitions? Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to speak to you, I mean, what are some of your highlights of those 150? Any particular standout moments, your favourite matches? You, you work back from, from the start and the, the start of it was great. Um, the, the response and reaction we had in that home game against Carlisle, um, your first one as a manager, and, and luckily we won that game, so you, you're off to a positive start. And then the highs and lows of, of that season, um, you think back to the MK Dons game, at home um, and some of the fixtures Notts County had a last minute winner when we had 10 men for such a long period of time I think it came off Nicky Lowe's nose um, and then obviously ran away and celebrated with, with our fans was, was absolutely fantastic but then to miss out right at the end where we in very well in all honesty, we should have got into the playoffs in that first season and we just couldn't quite get that ball in the back of the net often enough in those remaining games and certainly in that game at, at Forest Green and then to manage a club through my second season and to have it curtailed with, with 10 games left was unexpected it was incredible to go through um, but there was also a bigger picture than just football and football management um, and results and that was keeping the club stable keeping everyone safe um, trying to guide this group of players and my staff and the club through the most difficult of times when it came at such a difficult moment as well um, and it's been a not a whirlwind year but an incredible year and um, so proud of uh, what this young group have achieved this season um, but in terms of what we were and where we expected to be we far outweighed what we thought we'd be able to achieve this season. So it's almost strange because anyone who's managed in the in the pandemic, I'm sure will speak honestly in terms of how difficult it's been, what, what challenges we've faced, which, you know, we didn't predict at any stage, no one did. And, and we're still working within certain restrictions now. Um, but to get to 150 games as manager, um, yeah, I'm proud of that. Um, but I won't be thinking about that from now until Friday. Um, I certainly won't be thinking about that on Friday. All I'll be thinking about is trying to get this, this team performing well and playing well um, and hopefully producing three points um, come Friday afternoon, come Friday evening. And then maybe I'll have a moment on the coach on the way back. Um, everyone gives me a bit of grief because I, I never show any emotion. Um, it's been held against me for years and years and years by literally everyone, family included. Um, I might have a moment on the coach on the way home because um, that's an achievement. 150 games as a manager is, is certainly an achievement. But here's to the next 150 and hopefully they can have some success in them. What's the biggest lesson you've learned over those 150 matches, do you think? Um, but you try and prepare yourself as best you can for whatever's around the corner in, in life, not only in, in football, um, but the, the ones which you don't expect are the most difficult ones to deal with and you've got to deal with them on the spot. And everyone looks to yourself as, as the leader, as the manager to have all the answers. Sometimes, you know, you don't have all the answers, but you've got to figure out the right, right way to come up with a, a sensible solution and work towards it. Um, it's, it's been big in to the staff you know you'll talk about 150 games for myself I've got a fantastic group of staff behind me and um, it's took three years to or the best part of three years to assemble but I'm so you know I've talked about being proud of 150 games and, and what we've done in that time but this group of staff are excellent um, and no matter what happens this group of staff are serving the club to the, the best of their ability and they are all in believe me they are all in um, and I speak about Jake Taylor's performance in the second half at Oldham that was inspirational I get inspiration from seeing my staff seeing what they do and um, we've got a skeleton staff I've used that phrase an awful lot um, this season in terms of having to release people or let people go at the start of the season due to finances um, but to see how hard they work um, and how hard they work in terms of what they want for the players it's all about producing the best opportunity for each and every player at our football club which is why we produce players and players get better with ourselves and um, so seeing the staff develop and seeing them grow into the unit that we are now um, was a really big factor and you ask about what the most difficult thing is Football management isn't easy, but if you've got a good group of staff and, and, and honest players, then you've got a hell of a chance.